right, Commiss Radio Show back again, and we are turning this mother out. That's what we're doing. We're turning this mother out. And what we're doing here now during the second hour, the second hour of the Commiss Radio Show, we are talking with Mark D. Cooks, who's running for mayor of Duncanville, Texas. That's right. The Commiss Radio Show, loved by many, hated by few, respected by all, was second to none second to none so we're going to do a split screen here we got strip well strip is running everything you got these two boards going on right now he's showing you right now uh, as we're doing live now we just saw the clip of uh, the push card we used to do it old school style you know i used to hold it up like this and then go way up where you can see it nah we don't need to do all that now we got put that card back up there again man so now we got it now where you could actually see the card without having a strain in us not being professional. You know, it used to be at Channel 8, WFAA, Inside Texas Politics, KHVN, Heaven 97. Kind of like know what I'm doing. This is not an hour game type podcast where we say, hey, guys, let's put on a show. We are the show. And, you know, we are the champions because, well, Duncanville, I understand, is the city of champions. You see how I did that, man? Man, smooth. smooth, smooth. <laughs> you see how I did that? So, Mark D. Cooks, Strip, you got to understand, me and Mark go back. Mark, you've been on every single one of the Commission Radio Show studios. What do you think about this one? Man, this is a very nice studio, uh, Ed. Oh, should I say Dr. Ed Gray? Yeah, we, we, we got that. We got that. We got ABD. All but the dissertation done. Okay, all right. But we all got right. it. You call me that. I'm good with it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Very nice studio. Very nice studio. He's always impressed. Every spot, go you go higher and higher and higher. Man, I, I'm not... Pretty soon you have your own channel, right? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, we got Roku. We we, we have me subscribing on YouTube. We, we try to, you know, we try to, as we said before, try to turn this mother out. All right. All right yeah, you see. You. I, I got you. Well, you just slide them on in, don't you? That's what I do, man. <laughs> win. That's all I do is win, man. Good. So, I understand you winning. And... <laughs> Uh, you know what, it, you, you, you know, you're right. Uh, the paper, the paper stated that there's a tie. A tie. Uh, 1,050 votes for Mark D. Cooks, right. and 1,050 votes for the challenger. And notice how I said challenger, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but just the latest numbers I just received, uh, which is the final numbers, what we have now, 1,056 votes for Mark D. Cooks. And 1,054 votes for the uh, current uh, mayor, mayor uh, seating incumbent. So that means right now you're right. I'm winning by two votes. Two votes. Two votes. And the person you're running is the current incumbent. The person I run against Ed is the current incumbent uh, for four years. For four years. Now that means city council meetings are definitely interesting, man, aren't they? They are. Yes, yes, and 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 you and you say that to say that because uh, you know we we all work together. I mean, I have to admit mm -hmm. we don't have any real big turmoils on our council. We try to we try to work together. There's seven men on the council at this point, uh, with the newly elect uh, council person who's replacing me, uh, Karen Cherry, elect uh, councilwoman Karen Cherry. And so we get a shout out to her. Congratulations on her win for so, District 4. So now it's going to be a, a, a woman in there. On that, is, that is correct. So it was seven men prior to that? that? Seven men prior to that. Wow. Okay. These unprecedented times, which are not very unprecedented, how long has that happened? Wow. You know, that has happened for the last four years. Uh, we've had seven men on the council. Okay. All right. So now... Once we get past the okay, I'm all right type thing on it. So, 1,056 versus 1,054. How how did you pick up the six, and how did you pick up the four? Y'all found some votes somewhere. <laughs> well, you know what? The uh, I think the votes came in from the from the military. I was still waiting on those military votes to come in, for provisional votes, and they came in uh, over the last couple of days. And so I just received the updated information. I don't believe that everybody received that yet so that's going to be very surprising when we when they canvass that vote on Tuesday uh, everybody will walk in the room unless they have the information that I have uh, thinking it's a thousand fifty for a thousand fifty but it'll be a thousand 
1056 to 1054. Yours so, truly have been 1056. So how did you feel when you it was tied? You know, Ed, if I couldn't pull it out the way I needed to on the first round, I think a tie is the best way to go with it. And, and I say that to you because I, I think it will help motivate uh, the voters to come back out to know that the job is not done. And uh, there's some questioning whether those numbers, how could you, poss how could you possibly be 1,050 and 1,050? I don't have that answer, but I'll tell you that the voters uh, who's coming back on June 6th through June 14th for early voting, they will have that answer when they come and surpass uh, the number of votes we need to become the new mayor of Duncan Duncanville, the city of champions. All right, city of champions, Duncanville. That's right. Only appropriate, the commission radio show. A champion in the city of Duncanville. Uh, when you ran for Duncanville City Council, I, you, you must really clean the clock then. How many votes you win? Then? i tell you what, uh, at the end of the day, standing at the door watching the numbers being posted and watching that last voter go in as I was retrieving a sign, uh, one by one single vote. One vote. One vote. One vote, you you got on the city council by one vote, and yeah. then running for mayor, they call it a tie, that, officially that, a tie. That, that is correct. That is correct. Man, you, you just right there, ain't you? Man, I don't I don't know. You know what? I would rather I would rather win it by a landslide, but uh, I have to get I have to get what the voters give me. I'm gonna start moment. calling you landslide, Mark D. Cook. <laughs> so tell us about yourself. We we, we put up on the uh, uh, the screen when you vote. We win, and uh, you, you you thanked everybody on this flyer that we have right now right. for coming out. Uh, uh, and now early voting begins April 25th, May 3rd. No, that, that's the that's, that's the, the first one. That's the first one. Election day was May 7th, and uh, you said that this is coming up in June. Uh, tell us about yourself and, and who is Mark Cooks? Mark D. Cooks. And what does D stand for? D stands for, you know, depending on who I'm talking to. If I'm really talking to a real good person, I'll say dangerous. But ah. if not, it's Donnell. Okay. It's Donnell. Okay. All right. So uh, tell us uh, about yourself and how long you've been in Duncanville. Well, thanks, Ed. Ed uh, again, 16-year resident of Duncanville. Uh, I am a 61 resident of the DFW area, born and raised in Dallas, Texas. Uh, most of my life, I was, grew up right there in Oak Cliff. Right, in, uh, right off of Lancaster Road near the Veterans Hospital. Mm -hmm. So right there in, in the midst of the hood. And so, uh, so I've been in Dallas all my life. I have two adult children, uh, two, two sons. One is Desmond Cooks. That name sounds familiar. Yeah, Desmond, Desmond is Judge Desmond Cooks. He is the municipal judge uh, for Dallas. However, he is running for JP okay. uh, in a runoff even as we speak starting Monday. Okay. Uh, from the 16th through the 24th, Desmond, 16th through the 20th, I'm sorry, uh, Desmond is running against uh, another judge for his JPC. Uh, and so uh, I'm, we're excited about that run. So he's running he's running one race and I'm doing the other. That's where is that, Garland? That's in more so Dallas. It's Pleasant Grove, Formas Branch, okay. um, Northeast Dallas, right off of 30. And so I can't think of all those spots, but... If you live near Skyline uh, High School, if you near live if you if you live near off of 30 on St. Francis, that area gotcha. there is the area that he's gotcha. running to become the new JP. Okay, gotcha. All right. Then I have another son that's came as the Kedrill and Cooks. Uh, it's called K Cooks. K Cooks Music. Uh, he is a he's our licensed musician, and so you can find him with K Cooks Music. Uh, check him out on YouTube. Check him out on Facebook. Uh, he's normally at the Chocolate Secret every Thursday night uh, playing there, playing his jazz music there. So, you know, when you have two successful sons, you try to plug them in as all you can. Well, you got to do can. that. You got to do that. So I'm you, proud of my two sons. You got to do that for sure. You got grandkids too, right? I have four grandkids, uh, th three, three granddaughters and uh, one grandson. All right. Well, yeah. uh, attended Dallas Baptist University, it's, uh, as well as uh, a lot of banking and my a lot of banking uh, uh, a lot of banking background for his uh, financial seminars. And I'm a member of Concord Church of Dallas, where Pastor Brian Carter is my pastor. It's my frat brother. Okay, all right. 
So you you well in tune in the community. How long you say you've been living in Duncanville now? I've been living in Duncanville for 16 years. Uh, I've been, of course, been in Dallas all my life. All right. So before you uh, got elected uh, to city council, what boards and commissions were you on? And I have served, I started off serving, you know, it's funny someone asked me this, how did I get started? I started out serving uh, in the city of Cedar Hill under Mayor Rob Frankie on the parks board. I moved to Cedar Hill, uh, organized a, uh, a neighborhood watch committee. Uh, Mayor Frankie then asked if I would join one of his boards and he appointed me and him at the council to be on the parks board. Uh, I later moved to Duncanville, where I've served on several boards, where uh, the audit committee being one. Uh, I was president of the Economic Development Committee, uh, uh, Economic Development Corporation for Duncanville. Uh, I've also uh, served on the Board of Adjustments for Duncanville. So all of these things, I've served just about all you can serve here in the, in the city of Duncanville. So I'm not fresh to being a servant to our uh, citizens of Duncanville. And I think uh, when we first met, uh, we've been knowing each other now for about close to 10 years. That's correct. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, but yeah. Two, 2012 was when I first got on the council, from 2012 to 2014. Right, 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 right. And I was at that time on the Zoning Board of Appeals in, 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 in Grand Prairie. So right. That's uh, I, I love that board because the city council couldn't overrule you. Anything. That's correct. You're right. You know, so I remember one time one guy said, well, by golly, I'll go ahead and take this to the city council. And I, and I was the chairman of the commission, and thus the name the commission. And I looked over at the, uh, uh, looked over at, <laughs> at the lawyer, and I said, uh, council? And then I just motioned to uh, the gentleman that made the by golly remark and said, talk to him. He told me, hey, well, you can't do nothing about it. What's the commissioner ruled it? That's it. The chairman ruled it. Ruled it. So that's where the commission came oh, from. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. You, you don't like, never do that, Ed. You, 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 you sound like Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson. <laughs> she came on the show once, right? Uh-huh. True story. Then we get back to what we're talking about. And she, she asked her assistant, ask him why they call him the commission. And I heard her say it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and is. And the person followed the directions. It's Congresswoman Johnson. She gets you to follow directions real easy. So the person asked me that, and I told her. Uh -huh. And, she, and, and uh, the Congresswoman nodded and said, oh, now I see. And I looked yeah. over at him. I said, you just thought I was just a brother with a made-up name? <laughs> <laughs> and she nodded her head. <laughs> yes. So that's how, hey, folks, I actually did something in politics. Good. I actually did that. Good. So that was it. That was it. So once you run to Zoning Board of Appeals and mm -hmm. Parks Board, and all, there's only one thing next to do is, is, is run for city council or mayor. That, that is correct. And that's why when I, when I got on, off, off the Board of Adjustment, I, ran, I immediately ran for mayor, uh, got there in a three-person race, uh, and uh, there was an incumbent there for 22 years. 22 years, but uh, knocking on doors and meeting people, I was able to uh, uh, unseat that, uh, that incumbent, uh, incumbent after 22 years. And there goes my, uh, uh, there went my, my political career being, being seated on the city council of Duncanville. All right. What we're going to go ahead and do, we're coming up on the 520 mark, as we always do at 20 minutes. We get ready to do a, a drop. So we're going to play some of those drops that we have. Uh, so let's hear a couple of drops. Let's start with the well, John Crusoe drop, and uh, hey, let's go with those drops. And keep the camera on us, cause you know we're looking kind of clean, cause we got on shirts and ties in the middle of a heat wave, in which <laughs> ERCOT has told everybody to go ahead and be careful because they're running out of electricity. Mm, not again. Not again. <laughs> so keep in mind that. When you get ready to go to vote in November, remember the people who are in office today that, well, they're telling us to do these crazy things because they don't have enough AC for us in May and June, and they didn't have no heat for us over the winter. So let's play some drops, and we'll be right back. This is John Crusoe, your Democratic candidate for District Attorney for Dallas County. Thank you to the Commish and Ed Gray and the Commish Radio Show. Hi, my name is...
name is Gail Todd with Town View Realtors. If you find yourself in the market to buy, sell, lease, or maybe you want to be a part of this hot real estate market by investing, just give my team of professionals and I a call at 214-675-9572. Again, that's 214-675-9572. Or you can email me at gtodd88 at yahoo.com. With me, it's all about you. My name is Venton Jones, and I'm here on the Commission Radio Show. I'm running for state representative in the runoff for House District 100. I'm working to improve our health care, our civil rights and social justice, support for our public education schools, and also our community infrastructure. You can vote on May the 16th through the 20th and on Election Day on Tuesday, May the 24th. Vote Venton Jones for state representative for House District 100. Hey, this is Maria Aceves, and I'm running for the 192nd Civil District Court, and I'm listening to the Kamish Radio Show. Tune in. All right, Kamish Radio Show, back again, back again. And as you know, we do these radio drops, and we also do this as a, po a paid political advertisement, as you, if, as you will. Uh, for more information, visit www.markcooksformayor.com. Hey, that's what you're supposed to say. This is a paid political advertisement. Hey, but hey, when you run the show, I'm following. I'm following okay. your lead. But All you're right. totally right. You're totally right. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So for those folks who are coming on the show and realize that it's paid, I mean, this is how we do it. We we just simply. I, I'm not a WFAA. I don't have that kind of deal right there. This studio costs money, man. You know, we got we got people in and out and everything. But you know what's not in and out? What's not in and out? It's about the accomplishments of Mark Cooks. Mark D. Cooks. I keep, I, you put the Mark D. on there. It's like John F. Kennedy. Uh -huh. You got to say the whole thing. That's right. That's right. Mark D. Cooks. You know, you know it's funny about that, Dad. I got that from the judge, uh, Thomas G. Jones. Okay. And so over the years, I say, well, if, if Judge Thomas G. Jones can make sure he can wreck you and you believe about that G, surely I can use that Mark D. Cooks. That's the same way with <laughs> Michael G. Todd. That's right. He does the same thing with me too. So you know, so that that's it. You know, so you got to do that. I'm, I'm, I have to run for office so I can say Ed E. Gray. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like Ed E. Gray. <laughs> so that's what's going on. What are your major accomplishments as a city council member? You know, I, I'm glad you asked because before I, I'll tell you that. And I, every accomplishment is, is is major. There's no such thing as a minor accomplishment. Oh, I, oh, I agree. I agree because I worked hard at that. Uh, you know, before I say that, I told many, here's what I've said, uh, especially those who's running for office, I said, don't tell me what you're going to do until you tell me what you've done. And so here's what, as city council member, that I like to say that I've accomplished. One, uh, I told you in 2012 that I uh, was, was uh, elected to be on the council. During that year, we, we reduced our police officers staffing by two for some budget reason, whatever you want to call it. So we reduced it by two. Uh, since being back on the council, I have championed putting that, that budget of police officers to law enforcement to increase our uh, officers by, by two to, break, to get those two positions back. And I particularly said that I didn't want them behind the desk, but I want them on the streets of Duncanville for the safety of our community. Uh, so that was that was one of the accomplishments. Uh, the other accomplishment that I've noted was as I was looking at, uh, uh, they was giving us a presentation of all the beautiful parks, and we do have beautiful parks in the city of Duncanville. As I was looking at the budget dollars and what was happening in every park, I looked over my particular district, and there was one park that only $1,500 was spent over other parks in our city where 30000 and 40000 and 20000 was 15, spent. 15000 15, There was, was $1,500. 1500 50, Only $1,500 was spent on a park that was in my district at that time. And when I compared it to the, the other parks. 1500 a year? Yes, sir, the whole year. 
That was fifteen hundred dollars on the whole year that was spent. And I, I made that same comment that you just made, Ed. I said, I said I'm a banker, and I, I know I get numbers pretty. I know I look at numbers all the time. But am I reading that you spent fifteen hundred dollars on this part, and you spent thirty thousand on this other part, and twenty thousand on another part? They said, Yes, sir, Mr. Cooks. Uh, that's what you're reading. Uh, I immediately went to work. And by going to work, Ed, I made sure then that the budget included uh, having some additional funding for that particular part. What does fifteen hundred dollars a year do? I have the slightest idea. I wasn't there when they just signed. get someone to pick it up every once in a while. That's probably I mean, it. You know, pass by it. Okay, fifteen hundred dollars a year it was nothing. You know, I, I've had employees who make make that in a week. That's right. Well. Of course, you know, needless to say, that particular community was a more uh, black and brown community. And, and so, I, so I, but it wasn't because it was black and brown, but it was because it was in my district. Uh, while being in the district then, I then started trying to identify what was needed in that part. So being the listener and the, and the person that I am, I began to ask citizens what, what they feel they needed in that part. And, they had different ideas. They told me what they did not want. So as traveling throughout the country, I ran across a park that had outdoor workout equipment. Uh, I came back and we included that into the budget. So now that same park that started with $1,500, now it has an investment of $50,000 because now not only was children using that workout equipment, but I see adults using that workout equipment in that park. So that was a major accomplishment for that particular neighborhood. And then I'll sneak peek and say, uh, because wellness is one of the points that I like to move for our city, we will see more of that wellness workout equipment in some of our parks <laughs> moving forward. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's pretty good. I'm just still amazed about that. Uh, let's talk about, I'm still amazed about $1,500 <laughs> for yeah. a year. Wow, that's just amazing. Uh, now, you collaborated uh, with Community Partners, the Veterans Day Festival. W what is that about? You know, that was a new one. And I, uh, you know, we sat back and we thought about how important veterans are to our country, to our city. We recognize them during different holidays. And uh, in partnership with the Dallas College and the Rotary Club of Duncanville, uh, I, I met back up with the president of the Rotary Club and we sat across the table and decided what can we do for the veterans of Duncanville and the surrounding areas on Veterans Day. We knew that the city of Dallas during that time had reduced uh, their, their festivals that they were doing for veterans. So we hosted in partnership with Dallas College, the Rotary Club, and Mark Cooks as being on the city council, our first Veteran Day Fair where we provided veterans with food, information, uh, uh, even the VA, even the cemetery, the DFW cemetery came out to give information. So we hosted them with information and ways to make sure they were taken care of. And so that was our very first Veterans Day event. And, uh, and you can see some of that on my website where we had, where we recognized one of the soldiers that was still living in the city of Duncanville. And so we're going to continue that uh, for the next year, but the very first year, was truly hosted and, and given that opportunity to, uh, to host that with the, in partnership with two other organizations. You know, I was uh, discussing uh, with one of the interns here at the show today about uh, exercise and, and being healthy and everything, and I'm now beginning to walk better than what I have been walking before. So. All right. Man, arthritis, dude. I don't know, man. I, I think I may need to ride a bike or something, man. Ooh, yeah. You know what? That's the other part of healthy living. You, you, you said it right. You said it right. One of the things that, uh, you know, my whole goal is to move Duncanville. You know, we're, we're a city of 40,000 population. 40,000. 40,000 population. And with the census of being in the last 2020 census, we are a 22,000 voting population in Duncanville, but even with that city being 11.12 square miles of a city, I still wanted our city to move a little closer together. And so what a better way to do that is by having some uh, things that we can do together. And so I've hosted at least three 
bike riding events throughout Duncanville. We call it Bike Around Duncanville. We call it Get Out and Bike. We, I encourage people to listen. So I hosted where we toured Duncanville on bicycles. And uh, with that said, we had 20 to 30 people who lived in our community and outside of our community come and join us as we, as we rode bikes around Duncanville to encourage help the living. And so uh, it's nothing to ride uh, 20 and 30 miles. Uh, we had kids, we had students, we had a gentleman as old as 75 and 85 riding bikes uh, as we protected Duncanville, as we protected them as we were riding throughout Duncanville. Well, hey, you're doing real well on that. Let me ask you a, a question, a zoning co uh, question. Oh, all right. How you, you, you say, oh, we ready for that <laughs> Are we a build out in Duncanville? We, you know what, we are and build. And then explain to the people in the audience what build out is. I'll do that. We are build out to the point of, there's there's very there's very little land left in Duncanville to build anything major, any homes, any new uh, any new buildings, and so we'll build out from that standpoint. However, let's not get that confused. We are built out. We have some uh, buildings there that can be redeveloped, and and that's one of my platforms as well is to see how we can re redevelop some areas in our existing business that it's kind of let their they've not that's kind of let their buildings kind of go to the side and didn't care about them if i can just be honest for a second i'll be honest all the time but let me just be honest now for sure and that is the reason some of our buildings have kind of lost its flavor is because we have some investors who own those properties who don't care about the property and that means that they are They'll let it go down. They'll let the parking lot go down. They'll let the building go down. And so we're, I, I'm encouraging them through incentives. I'm encouraging them through participation and partnership to sweeten it up a little bit to make, our, to make redevelopment the key area for us to do better in for the city of Duncanville, to draw people who has a business to come and have a business in Duncanville. If they live in Duncanville, if they don't, come outside of Duncanville and bring a great business to our city as well. Okay, let me ask you a question here. If we, once we bring these, these businesses, they have to ride on roads. That's correct. Tell me about your infrastructure regarding roads. You know, we had a $23 billion bond election here uh, within the last two years. Part of that $23 billion uh, bond election is we, was for infrastructure. And so what that means is some of our streets uh, we know that some of our streets needed some tender love and care. And so with that, we uh, had to refurbish, uh, put some more overlay down of our streets to make sure our streets are in proper conditions uh, over the years. And so we're working on that now. If you drive down the, the, uh, the if you drive down Daniel Dale Road right now, uh, Daniel Dale in Maine, coming off of 67, you will see that we are resurfacing uh, I mean, rebuilding that road there on, on, on Daniel Dale. And that won't be the only one that we're working through. We're going through our, our community and looking to see which road uh, needs more work than others. And we're, we're stretching that out to, re, to replace it as we go along. All right, Strip, you know, we're about ready to go ahead and take a road trip, if you will. If we're gonna take a road trip, we might as well go to Thibodeau's, which is in Duncanville, Texas. So let's open up with that Thibodeau's drop and let's play a couple more drops and we'll come back we will talk more with Mark D. Cooks about his future goals for the city of Duncanville, City of Champions. Hey, you know, whenever I want good Cajun food, I go to Thibodeau's, located at 107 North Cedar Ridge in Duncanville, Texas. They're really hot, just like the Commiss Radio Show in Thibodeau's. Hot is this gumbo. We will see you later at Thibodeau's. Hi, I'm Ed Bridges, CEO, founder of Wrong Way Driver Alert. And one thing that we know, when you need to go the right way, we always turn to Commission Radio. He never leads you in the wrong direction. So here at Highway Nation, we want to thank Mr. Ed Gray for taking us in the right direction. And visit us on Facebook, Highway Nation page, and give us a like. Hey. 
Hey, this is Cheryl Smith, and when I'm looking for news and information, I tune in to The Commish on Saturday. I got so much trouble on my mind. Refuse to lose. It's your ticket. Hi, this is Howard Scott from The Howard Scott Show. Coming to you from beautiful Arlington, Texas on Fishbowl Radio. You can catch me every Wednesday from 6 to 7. And we play all this war music. And you get to hear some of the songs that I wrote when I was in the band War. How I created the songs, the stories behind it. And we start off with the blues. You have a good time talking to me. So tune in every Wednesday from 6 to 7 and catch The Howard Scott Show. We're having a whole lot of fun on Fishbowl Radio. Jump in. All right, that's it, that's it, that's it. We always campaigning, and that, you heard, was Howard Scott of War. You know, that's right. Howard Scott of War is right here in this studio, right here. Had the opportunity to take Mr. Scott out to, well, we had the opportunity to take him out to a concert. I, I, I was tripping out. I said, I'm taking Howard Scott War? I mean, this guy's written all these classics, and it's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm. Do something about that. Let's honor him. Let's honor him. I mean, he's wrote for everybody, including Bob Marley. I mean, hey, everybody. Howard Scott of War. I'm going to war right now. I'm going to war right now because I want Duncanville, Texas. Well, I need to see some changes in Duncanville. So that being said, Mark D. Cooks, what can you do for Duncanville, man? You know what, uh, Ed? Thank you for, for for asking. You know, I want to, I want to embrace Duncanville's past in order to leave us to our future. And so we we can't we can't just move forward without having a great past. Duncanville has a have had a great past. Uh, however, it is time now for us to move forward. And the way to move forward is more so to pull citizens from all around our city to be involved and to get involved. My role in that, uh, Ed, is to, is to lead us through areas where we are we're participating on boards and we're participating on projects uh, that'll help see how we're gonna go move forward in the future. Uh, you know, too, often, too long, uh, Duncanville has been controlled by uh, not just 2,000 people who only vote, but just a very small niche of people who give directive on which way our city should go. And, I, and honestly, the one reason I'm running is because uh, I felt that that's not right and it's not fair. And so me being the includer that I am, uh, wanted, meaning I want to include all into the process, uh, selected that I wanted to run for mayor in order to bring more people to the, around the table. Uh, you know, it was great. It's great, Ed, to be, uh, you know, invited to the party. But if I'm never asked to dance, then I'm just at the party. And so... My role as running for mayor is to get more people around the table where our city, the great city of Duncanville, which has great quality homes, uh, our education is, is matched to none with the Dr. Mark Smith at the realm of our superintendent, uh, and then just our great parks that we have in our city. So we have a lot to offer. Uh, at this point, it needs a leader such as myself to lead us forward into the future that we, need, that we know that Duncanville is capable of being and being the city of champions. Well, being the city of champions, how can you improve the infrastructure? You know, one of the things to include the infrastructure, as I mentioned before, we'll, 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 we'll take it like we do the elephant, one bite at a time. We know there are some things throughout our city that's going to take us a little time to do, uh, is that is to put a listing of goals up and say, hey, let's fix our streets, let's repair our parks, let's do some economic development and put some, uh, improve our buildings. Uh, just within the last month, uh, the city has partnered with the developer and purchased a shopping center, and the developer who purchased that shopping center and the city of Duncanville partnered together that we're going to improve that shopping center overall. We're going to bring new business to the shopping center. We're going to give it a big facelift. Those are the things that we think that I think as a as a mayor that I can help champion. Uh, as we finish that project, we can move to our next project and keep going. Where's the shopping center at? That's on, that's on the Wheatland Road in Maine, uh, right across from Reed Middle School. It used to be, the, for those that are familiar with Duncanville, it's where the old minions used to be right there on the Wheatland Road. Wheatland Road, okay. Uh, yeah, wait, right, right there where the old minions used to be located. Okay. Well, I tell you what, you'll, you'll know it's better, Ed. You and I don't go too much, but 
Big Mike's uh, Barbershop is right there in that shopping center. Big Mike. No, I don't go to Big Mike's Barbershop. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it is there, and that's the shopping center that we're going to start partnering with and make better. Big Mike sure appreciates you giving him a shout out. Yeah, I'm sure he does. Yeah, he sure does. does. So sure. Well, I, I worked. I walked through that. The, I walked through the the other day, uh, talking to customers and saying, "Look, uh, I'll cut your hair for free. All I ask you to do is go go vote." But you know, they, nobody they, took nobody me took me up on that. Uh, but you know, one of the things we want to improve is that we have a legendary park right there in Duncanville. It's called Armstrong Park. We're going to put a splash pad. This is what our $23 million bond project. We're going to have a splash pad there. And where's Armstrong Park at? It is right there on Wheatland Road. Same thing, uh, right by our police station. Uh, so it's, main, it's Wheatland and Main Street. That's the center of our city. Uh, so, and by City Hall. Uh, it's, a, it's going to be a great park. It's, already, it's been there for years and years. Actually, the history of that park is when Duncanville first started building the park, that park was was uh, manufactured or built by citizens of Duncanville. But it's been around for a long time, and as everything, it aged out. And so it is time now to uh, redo that park and to move to our next stage of the park. It's almost like mayor. It's time, it's time to get a new mayor. It's time to get a new park. So uh, at this point, we are we are reinvesting into that park uh, over seven hundred, over a million dollars or so in that park just to bring it up to par. Now, how are you going to pay for all this? Uh, that's that bond election I just told you about. Citizen of Duncanville spoke very loudly when we asked, what would you like for us to do with the bond election funds? And so that was one of the items that they said, clearly redo our parks. And so that's not the only park. We did other parks the same way. So now one of the items that you have here uh, is that you say reinvigorate our tax base. Yes. Now, if you 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 putting all this money out, how are you going? Are you going to raise taxes? We're not going to raise taxes. Actually, to, 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 uh, actually, here's what we did. For the last three years, uh, and, and I'm sitting on the council for the last four, we've not raised taxes for our citizens of Duncanville. Uh, we either kept it flat, or we actually lowered it in some cases for the city of Duncanville. So. Uh, no, what we're going to continue to do is we're going to use that bond money that we talked about initially to do those upgrades. Uh, I think the tax dollars that we talked about right now, our city is driven from it's by property tax. So we have two taxes that we do: property tax and sales tax. Uh, one of the ways to increase our revenue is to increase sales tax. To get sales tax, we need new businesses through the Duncanville. And so as we encourage uh, economic development or redevelopment, uh, we hope to, improve, to, to improve businesses in our city as we get more sales tax that allow us opportunity to do more things in our city without raising our property tax. All right, I also noticed that you have uh, hotels that are, that are in Duncanville now, nice hotels and everything. How's your hotel tax coming? Tell you what, we have some we have some good five star hotels in our in our uh, in our city. It's funny you asked that, Ed, because I was thinking about you know what's our next step. Uh, I would like to, I don't have it on my platform now, but in my mind I'm thinking one of the things we need to do is look and see about raising some sales tax on our hotels. And once we do that, that'll also generate some more dollars for us to work within our own city to keep our city being the beautification that it is. And that way you won't have to be a burden, if you will, on those people who actually live in the city itself. That is, that is correct. Those are those are tourists that's coming in our city. Okay. Well, this has been a fast-paced uh, hour that we engaged in. Uh, I'd strip, I, I, I know you have the cameras up where he can do like we used to do with Bernie Mac talking to America. Since Mark D. Cooks likes to uh, engage and include our neighbors. Yes. He can talk right there in that camera right there and talk to the people of Duncanville. Yeah. Like, you like, Bernie Mac. I mean, <laughs> hey, you can't talk to America. You can talk to Duncanville, though. Hey, well, well, Duncanville, as I as you will see uh, many times if I'm mailing you something, or even if I'm advertising, excuse me, to speak to you, I say, good morning, Duncanville. And that means to me that I'm speaking to you one-on-one -on -one, like we have to, on this camera. But more so, here's what I'm asking. I'm asking the city of Duncanville to return to the poll 
June 6th through June 14th. Why, why doing early voting? Early voting is when we run the race. And sometimes people are asking, I want to see change. I want to see this happen. But we continue to vote in the same direction we did have before. I'm asking you to vote for Mark Cook. Some of the reasons is because of what I've already told you before, uh, what we need in our city, or what you've told us in our city. I hear you when you're speaking about Homestead. Uh, I hear you when you're talking about Homestead for our city. Those are the things you'd like to continue to work on on Homestead. I hear you asking about economic development or redevelopment. I hear you, and as your candidate for mayor, and as your next mayor of the city of Duncanville, I will work to listen to what you're asking me to do. I will work within our budget. I will work within our uh, vision of our city to help us move forward. I can't do it without you. So this is Mark Cooks, and I'm asking you to let's move forward together in the city of Duncanville by electing me to be your next mayor of Duncanville. All right. Flip it back to me, and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the Commission Radio Show. And we'll be back next week where we'll be talking legal standpoint with Michael G. Todd. Thank you for tuning in to Commission Radio Show. And we'll see you next week. And also, Monday. This is Albert Black, and I'm a big fan of Ed Gray and the Commission Radio Program. Hey y'all, it's Cynthia Patrice, and when I'm not coding an app and working on Beauty Feel, I'm listening to the Commish Radio Show, Saturdays, 3 to 5, Central Standard Time. Men, you've been spending countless hours on YouTube searching for encouragement and empowerment. I want to give you the tool that you need today. It's InTheHuddleOnDemand.com. Go to InTheHuddleOnDemand.com today for the encouragement and empowerment that you've been searching for. You'll get a behind-the-scenes look of what's been going on with In The Huddle with Chris Howell. Go and check it out today. This is Sheldon Smith, president of the National Black Police.